this lecture, we review intellectual property. We have a very brief discussion, and then I'll provide a story to help your understanding. First, note that intellectual property is one of the content areas that belong to the federal government under, Uni under the United States Constitution. The states delegated this content to the federal baby in 1789. Thus, there is no state intellectual property law. Some states have a minor area where they restrict certain types of intellectual property, such as names of corporations. But basically, the federal government has the exclusive right to regulate this subject area. The reason for that delegation was because in 1789, no one really wanted to have conflicting law on what is your intellectual property, what is your poem, what is your patent, what is anything that belongs to you from your creativity. No one wanted to have laws that would give one person more in one state, one person less in another with regard to how they were creating property through their intellect. So that leads us to a discussion of what is property and then what is intellectual property. Property, if you would, think of it like an extension of you. So I own my body, I own this shirt, I have my hair, my watch, I can extend that as far as we would see such as ripples extending from a pebble falling onto a surface of a pond. As the ripples go out, I know that I own my car, my house, I don't need to keep possession or watch over them to prove that I own these. And even though I'm, I'm physically away from them many times, they are still mine. It doesn't mean that I lose them as soon as I lose sight. And I say that to correct many people's view on a false idea that finders are legal keepers of lost property. And I can also have other types of property that are less tangible. Let's move that pond ripple out even further and think about things that I create out of my effort to think, to produce through my brain and intellect, such as a poem, a patent over an invention, or a procedural manual. Anything that comes out of my head then becomes property of mine. So the federal government provides through the U.S. Constitution and the, Fo F the Code of Federal Regulation protections for those items of mine. For business law students, much of the problem is distinguishing one type or another. For instance, a service mark is not the same as a trademark. We'll use McDonald's, the restaurant, as an example. So when you see the golden arch or a symbol like that outside McDonald's restaurant, that's not a trademark or a trade dress. That is a service mark. That symbol on a sign, that idea, represents what they do inside, which is serve food. The mark says, come by and we will serve you at McDonald's. As a restaurant, they are in the service industry. But once you get inside and you purchase a McDonald's hamburger, you'll see the same emblem wrapped around the hamburger, but that logo is now trade dress. What McDonald's has done is taken the same image of the golden arches and used it as both a service mark and a trade dress. They dress it up with their trade. They dress up their trade with this mark. And indeed, McDonald's Incorporated went through two processes with the federal government's U.S. Patent and Copyright and Trademark Office to register both its service mark and its trade dress mark. And even though the symbol is the same, there are two different properties here. Well, as you study this area, make sure you have a solid understanding about each type of intellectual property. For instance, copyrights protect expressed ideas. They don't protect ideas. I can't own the idea of red or love, but I can express myself in a unique way through a poem or a song on love, and I can begin using red in an advertising campaign, and the way I use it or express it in a unique way in my expression, that expression becomes my property, my protected property. And as you study this area, be careful with the idea of infringement. Infringement is the word that the intellectual property courts use to say someone has harmed or trespassed someone, others, someone else's rights. 
it's your property and someone has trespassed upon your property. But through that, though, when you're studying, you should be careful to distinguish infringements applications from copyright infringement, patent infringement, trademark infringement, and more. You see, infringement merely means you've trespassed, you've done something you should not have done, you, have, you didn't have that right. But how one infringes changes based upon the type of property, the type of intellectual property. In other words, different kinds of infringement exist. Before I move on, I want to briefly review trade secrets, the last one I want to mention before we start the story. Every business has something in common with all other businesses, which is you want to keep your client lists, your customer lists, your research, your plans, all of that secret. You don't want your competitor knowing about your customer lists. A property right exists in your business secrets. So how do you protect your property here, business secrets? Simply, you keep that information secret. Indeed, if someone were to spy and steal your trade secrets, that individual would owe you damages, but also likely go to jail for a federal offense for stealing your property. Think of it like that, as everyone who is in business has a need to understand what trade secret law does. Let's go to our McDonald's story, and I'll share that with you.